Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about hope and explain what I think the proper view on the on the concept is. Um, I'm not going to call it a virtue or vice right away because I want to build the suspense a little bit. Um, so hope is actually one of the three cardinal virtues of Christianity. Um, and objectivists generally have an opinion on, on the other two very strongly. Um, I would say that uh, faith, as most objectivists agree, is not a good epistemological standard, and it, it, it's entirely destructive. Faith would entirely be a vice, so the fact that Christianity is saying it's a virtue is one major problem with Christianity. And love, on the other hand, love is something that Christianity doesn't fully understand. Love, is, as in the Christian conception, is sacrificial. It's giving yourself to another person, and this is a misconception of love. So the Christian version of love is obviously not a virtue. It's a vice. Um, however, love is misconstrued by the um, religious, by Christians to be this vice. But love in general, when properly defined, is not a vice. Um, now, hope is another thing that Christians have, have a very negative view about. They view, they have this view that you should um, irrationally hope in the future, have this irrational hope that God's plan is going to come into effect in the future and that you don't have to work too hard and just trust God's plan. Don't fight against the, the, the flow of life. Like that's God's plan guides you forward and you don't, you shouldn't fight against that. Um, and just have hope in that knowing that God has a plan for all of this. And this leads to a very passive sort of state that a lot of Christians have. I was actually very obsessed with this idea when I was religious. I was almost, I was actually flirting with, uh, um, Taoism or Taoism for a time, um, because, I liked this whole idea of there's this there's just this natural flow of life and you just need to accept it and follow it and have hope that the future is going to be, be beautiful if you follow it and really what negativity is is when you try to fight against the natural flow of your life um or what what bad things happen when you try to fight against that um and this is a very very dangerous mindset because it makes you passive it makes you not want to go out and act for yourself, go out and grab things for yourself. It makes you um, not very ambitious. Um, and that's not a good thing because you want to be ambitious. You want to fight for your values. You want to fight very hard for your values because your values do not just come to you naturally. This is, an, this is an important principle. Values are not automatic. This is what the, um, the Christian conception of um, hope and the Taoist conception of hope get wrong. Your values are not automatic. They won't come to you automatically. There's not this God that has a plan that will um, f make your values come to you if you just are patient long enough or, or if you just are um, if you just trust in him and have hope that the future will be bright so this is this is the problem with the Christian conception of hope this is a major problem it leads to a lot of passivity and it actually in my case it led to a lot of anger at life a lot of hatred of life because I was being passive I was just waiting for things to come and that was it wasn't working it clearly wasn't working um, it actually, in my journals, that was a big thing that I struggled with. I would constantly ask, is this what God's plan is? Is this really God's plan? What the fuck is this shit? Like, I'd get so mad. I have some very, very passionate um, journal entries where I'm just vi protesting God's plan and asking, like, is this really, is this really this beautiful thing that, um, that I should, that I should want? And I was, it was because I was being passive. It was because I was not going out and trying to actually grab, like, achieve my values. Um, I was just passively sitting in hope and faith, this sort of integration between hope and faith that Christians do, where it's, um, you have faith in God, so you have hope in the future, hope that God's plan will sort of manifest itself in your life. Um, and this is dangerous because obviously, as I said, it leads to passivity and it leads to a sort of anger at life and a sort of, it almost leads to a malevolent universe premise because you realize very quickly that this passive sort of lifestyle that is encouraged by hope doesn't actually lead you to a um lead you to a benevolent universe premise it doesn't actually make you think that the universe is benevolent because it doesn't actually achieve anything um you won't actually achieve your values if you live this sort of passive lifestyle where you're not where you're not thinking and where you're not acting you need to act you need to act in reality um you can't be passive and wait for things to come to you um that but that's what the christian conception of hope encourages um and it yeah it led me to being having a very malevolent view of the universe um, it, yeah, it, it led me to thinking that that 
it, it ultimately contradicted itself. It led to a lack of hope. It led to a lack of view that there, that my future will be bright, <laughs> because I realized that that my current way of living was not actually um, working. <laughs> and it, I mean, ultimately, like this faith-based conception of hope like most other things in religion, led to a credible doubt of hope. It led to this, every time I doubted the fact that the future would be right, it would weigh on me heavily because with this conception of hope, with this conception of what I'm doing and what the future will actually hold, I know deep down that this is not actually going to achieve my values, that I'm not actually going to achieve my values with this conception of what I, how I should act and what my future should be. Um, so then ultimately that would... It would, it would absolutely crush me. It would absolutely uh, destroy my sense of life um, every time that credible doubt crept in. Now, this is like one thing that religious people, quote unquote, struggle with. Like th that, that's actually a very common um, thing in, in religion where, where people talk about how, oh, I struggle with this, with this um, temptation or struggle with this bad thought process where, and that's, it's basically just, they're pointing at credible doubt. That's, that's a very important principle here. They're pointing at this, this, credible doubt that they feel every time that they doubt a certain religious premise it's it's when religious people struggle with doubt and this applies to matters of faith as well this m applies to matters of do i believe in god well every time i question it i have credible doubt and it weighs on me and that's it there's this extreme tem this there's this extreme doubt that comes with being religious that i don't get as much anymore because i don't get it at all really anymore um i'm because I know what I know what my ideas are based on. I know that I can justify my ideas, um, and if there is something wrong, I can be corrected through rational means. But for religious people, there's no sort of rational means that they come to their ideas. Their ideas are based on nothing. So then this credible doubt weighs heavily upon them, um, and religious people struggle with doubt constantly. Um, and this, the same thing applies to their conception of meaning, and their same thing applies to their to their view of the future. And that's basically what I'm talking about. Their their view of hope. Um, so every time they have this credible doubt of God, they have this credible doubt, credible doubt of God, they have a credible doubt of the future and of the idea that the universe is open to their values and that their values are achievable in the world. And that's a very, very dangerous thing. So this is basically the problem with the Christian conception of hope. Um, now, what is the proper view of hope? Um, well, the proper view of hope in an objectivist conception would be just this idea that the universe is open to my values and if i take the right actions if i act virtuously i will be able to achieve my values that's what hope is basically that's what hope should be that's how hope should be defined now a lot of objectivists see the christian conception of hope and reject it outright um i think that's a mistake i think there's a valid usage for the term hope i think there's a valid usage in the sense that um if i take certain actions if i am virtuous i will achieve my values it's this benevolent universe premise. It's sort of this idea of the causality of your virtues, how your virtues will cause you to achieve certain values. Um, so if you follow certain virtues, if you act in a certain way, these value you will achieve your values. And that's sort of what hope is. It's sort of understanding that you can achieve these values and that you will achieve these values and that there in life there is a potential for happiness. There's a potential to achieve pleasurable values that are consistent with your life. So that's that's what that's what hope should mean. That's what hope sh that's what the hope as a concept should represent. Um, and I think in that sense, it can be a very valid concept, and it can be an important an important integration to make. And it it's like we can't just reject hope outright because there's a sense in which hope is important. There's a sense in which it's important to view life positively and view that your values are achievable in the world. Um, and that's kind of what objectivism. Um, uses the benevolent b benevolent universe premise to represent so when you think about hope you shouldn't think about this sort of blind optimism and faith in god um which is kind of what hope has represented um but it's also kind of been a package deal as well so i think if we i think if we want to still hold on to the concept of hope we should hold on to it in the context of the benevolent universe premise um and view it as something of my values are possible to be achieved by me in the world so that's i mean that's that'd be a proper way to think about the concept of hope rather than dismissing it outright and accepting sort of this package deal that christians make of it a lot of things are package deals honestly like selfishness um hope all the all these sort of things are package deals that and a lot of the problems come from 
a Christian way of thinking, a Christian way of thinking about ethics. Christianity loves to package deal certain things together and then in the context, in the case of hope, make that a virtue and in the case of selfishness, make it a vice. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, so have hope, but don't have a Christian conception of hope. Don't have blind hope in the future that no matter what you do, good things will happen. No, you need to take the proper actions to for your survival if you want to be happy, if you want to achieve your values if you want to live so yeah um i think that's all i have to say for today um thank you all for watching i hope to see you all in the next video peace